Aloha Honolulu Data here with episode 19 of the Honolulu Huskies Custom Fantasy Draft Franchise Mode. In the last episode, we were coming off the best season in franchise history, points-wise and record-wise. But in the playoffs, we, although we made it further technically than we ever have, going to Game 7 of Round 2, our previous record being swept in Round 2, we lost in 7 games to the eventual Stanley Cup champions, the San Jose Sharks. Just like the year before, we lost to Vegas and they went on to win the Cup. It was just all Connor McDavid, and he carried the Sharks to a Stanley Cup victory in seven games over the Lightning. I think we definitely could have beat the Predators. The Lightning would have been tough, but it could have been a Cup year for the Huskies. Ellis Anderson won the Art Ross Trophy and the James Norris Trophy. He got robbed a little bit when it came to the awards. Looking at the comments here right away, Yurka Halby, he put a nice long comment talking about that. And we lose the champion. Uh, he also spoke about some suggestions, but just the bottom of his comments, you see, he was expecting four trophies for Ellis, and he only got two. Poor guy, because it was a bit of a bias maybe for the forwards, as Duke Silver won the heart. But hey, it was still a Honolulu Husky, so Duke Silver won the heart. He won the Ted Lindsay, and uh, Ellis Anderson. Also, yeah, he also won the Lady Bing. So he won three trophies when some thought that he should have won five and we also got Samsonov winning the Jennings so it was a very good season for us we had a great year in Honolulu and now we want to gear up and have a even better season but that starts with the suggestions in the last episode so going back to that comment Yerka Halby he said try to sign Pellick to a five-year deal that's something we'll get to later on in the contracts in the draft I would try to get the elite offensive defensemen so looking at the draft class we picked 27th since there are not many in the game with the years going on and on. That's true. So in the draft here, this guy, what's his name? Stan Noakes. He is ranked fifth. Our scouts maybe have him fourth. He's an offensive defenseman, medium elite, 18 years old from the Medicine Hat Tigers. In the WHL last season, he had 65 points in 67 games. Slap shot, puck mover, shutdown ability. Not very physical or great defensive yet. But he's still a year away. He's similar to P.K. Subban. So I would like to get Stan Noakes. That would be great. I'm not sure what I'd be able to trade to get him then. I'll have to work on that. But that's going to be something we'll look at in the draft very, uh, very shortly. The other comment coming from Reese Garut. He says, I think you should go for that goalie at 58. Your pick is 43, so you'd be reaching. Well, maybe I'll just trade down if I were to pick at 58. Let's go to 58 here. Um, but a medium league goalie would grow well in the AHL if the team continues its success like the past years. Could be the face of the blue paint for the franchise. A very true point. Look at the guy right here, Saul Bentley, King Saul, from the Elv uh, Ever Elvert. Everett Silvertips in the WHL. He's six foot four, 18 years old. He's still five years away, but he has the medium league potential. In the WHL last season, he went 35-22-5. and five. We do have a couple other medium elite goalies in the system, but this guy's ranked pretty high, and you never know. He could be the future. I wouldn't mind. You know, there's not a lot of guys around here, so going for a medium elite goalie wouldn't be a bad pick at 58 if I were to trade down with my pick at 43, which actually I think I have another pick in the Yeah, I could just use my pick in the 50s because my pick around 43, I can use somebody over here. But my pick at four, uh, early 50s, I have an early 50s pick, so that wouldn't be too much of a reach, actually. Yeah, that could work out perfectly. And then also off camera, not in the comments, Tornado Panda gave me a suggestion saying he thinks it might be time to move Cole Perfetti. Now, Cole Perfetti, obviously another franchise mode. He has immediate lead potential. I've seen him become a first, second line center, 89 overall, everything. But the problem is that Trevor Wong has overshadowed him with his medium lead potential. He's a year old, a year younger, three overall higher. The great thing about Cole Perfetti is that he's signed for the next one, two. He has a two more years, two more years at 1.275, which is a steal. Meanwhile, Trevor Wong is still is signed long term at five million. I love that. So my future, my second line center is locked in at Trevor Wong. If I keep Cole Perfetti, he's going to be my third line center. Do I want to keep a guy like Cole Perfetti as my third line center who has, who's dropping, he has a lot of trade value, but he's dropping in trade value. His defensive stats are decent, but he hasn't had the best years here in Honolulu. Four seasons he's had in 100, 120 points in 326 games. Uh, he's coming off a career high of 42 points with a plus three. So it wasn't a bad season at all for Cole Perfetti. Just that, is this the time to move him? I played him on the power play. He had eight power play points. So minus those, he had 34 regulation points on the third line. 
He played a lot. I played him on the penalty kill, the power play, and that took away from Trevor Wong because I want. I would rather put Trevor Wong in the power play and the penalty kill because he only got. Well, he did play power play, but second unit uh, at the point for only half the season because Ovechkin took over after. He could have done even more. He got 51 points last year. He's gotten 108 points in 246 games. So I think I'd rather have Trevor Wong, to be totally honest, over Cole Perfetti. I'd rather get a better defensive third-line center. Uh, there might be a lot of moves in this draft because I got I to gotta move some pieces here in my, in my bottom six for sure. Looking just at my, let's say, centers right here, Cole Perfetti could move. I might move Malatesta even. Uh, he's not really a, a center. He's more of a winger with 60 face-offs. Uh, Peyton Krebs I might move. If I could just maybe qualify and trade him, 25 years old, top six potential, hasn't really grown much. To be honest, I've buried him a bit on the fourth line, but 56 points in 246 games. He's been great in the minors, but a playmaker, he, he would have to be a top six player, and or even like third line. Maybe I could play him third line left wing, but I don't know, Peyton Krebs is on the edge. Right wing is Arthur Kaliev, I definitely want to move. He hasn't done anything in this franchise. I tried to give him all the benefit of the doubt. 21 points in 160 NHL games, five points this, two seasons ago, 16 points last season. Granted, he only gets, well, 10 minutes of ice time is pretty decent tonight. So he hasn't just, he's down to an 80 overall. He was an 83 before. In the playoffs, he had two goals in 14 games. I think I'm ready to move on from Arthur Kaliev. Cole Lind will probably go to free agency. And then defensively, one, two, three, four, five, six. We are locked and loaded on defense. We have a great defensive core, not making a lot of money. Justin Barron, I feel bad burying him. Maybe I should trade him. But I don't know, that's something to think about down the road. Because I still, I have some gems, not gems. I have good prospects who could definitely grow. Like VAU over here. I forgot to look at the progress reports last uh, last episode. But Serge VAU... He had a lot of. He had a good first season in the AHL, up to 78 overall. Suzuki and Williams, I'm gonna have to trade. Their potential's about to be bust, and they just haven't grown at all. Even though they're playing first line AHL, how? What more can I do for this guy? Playing. Uh, what am I gonna do? Play him in uh, the NHL as a third line center at 77 overall? I don't think so. So we're gonna have to figure that out. But first things first, it is time for the draft, boys. Let's hop into it. Hopefully, it's not a super long off season. But here in the 2026 offseason, starting with the NG draft, let's do it. Any teams want to trade their picks, they do not. So I'm going to, if I want to trade for that defenseman, he's probably going to be fourth or fifth overall, Stan Noakes. Oh, what would Pittsburgh want if I were to get that pick? What do I have to give them? Can I package a bunch, bunch of stuff? Like here's my 27th overall pick. Here is Arthur Kaliev. Yeah, it's not very much. Uh, Peyton Krebs doesn't have a lot of value either. Uh, I could definitely... Th Cole Perfetti alone could get that deal done. Uh, can I throw in Malatesta? Then they probably have too many forwards in the system. Yeah, for sure. I can't... Actually, they have... Uh, I, can't, I can only give them Arthur Kaliev, I think. Uh, even that, I have to take somebody back. So that's the issue. If I keep my pick at 27, who was I going to get? I was going to get... Uh, no one that special. Okay, so I can definitely trade pick 27 to the Penguins. I could do that. I could do that. Well, what are people offering me? Maybe they, if they offer me interesting pieces, maybe I could trade those pieces also to Pittsburgh because they don't seem very interested by the pick either. If I just see what on the open block I would get offered, I could get a second and a third. Marcus Pedersen, Jimmy Vesey, and Mer oh, come on. Are you serious? Nick Bugstad, Tage Thompson, DeFazio, and a third, Zadarov, Phil Kessel, <laughs> and a third, Eric Gustafson, Radic Faxa, Victor Arvidsson's interesting. Don't really need second liners, though. No, I'm not going to do that. No good trade offers, really. Okay, so I'm going to try to make it work with Pittsburgh. Maybe I could just trade Cole Perfetti straight up. Do I just trade Cole Perfetti straight up and then take back more? 83 overall, 24 years old, on a great contract. I'd have to take back a forward, but let's say I take back a good rookie skater instead. Actually, instead of taking back someone cheap, maybe I can get back an actual third line center for myself. Ah, uh, Clean Costin or Clem Costin? I don't know, but 82 overall. Uh, not the greatest stats. That's tough. I don't think I'll take him, but maybe Joe Valeno is interesting. Philip Heidel, he's gonna want a bit of a contract though. Pretty good player. 
This is tough. He's going to want a decent contract. 3.1 he's making right now. Joe Valeno will have one more year. He's medium top six potential. Former first round pick of Detroit. 83 faceoffs. He's a two-way forward. I only played one game last season. The year before wasn't that great, but maybe I put my trust in Joe Valeno as my third line center. Would that go straight up? No, I need to add more. All right, let's see if I can get Valeno, Johnson, and Heidel. I'm going to let them both go to free agency. I'll throw in Malatesta. I'll throw in Arthur Kaliev with Cole Perfetti for the first for the fifth overall pick and Joe Valeno. What do you say, Pittsburgh? Trade rejected. Okay, I'll throw in the, my 27th overall pick, but I need you to do something for me. You give me 37. Well, we go from 27 to 36. That's, ah, come on. I'll add a third next season. Trade rejected. Ma Okay, looks like we're just going back to basics, boys. Here we go. Back to basics. Tyler Johnson, I'll just take him back for the contract. I want Cole Perfetti. I'll give you Cole Perfetti. All right, Cole Perfetti for the fifth overall pick, the 98th overall pick, two fourths next season, and Tyler Johnson. Okay, let's just take out one of the fourth round picks. Let's take out the other fourth round pick. Let Final seconds before the trade clock runs out. Oh, come on. Oh, man. So, okay, okay. Blue Jackets took this guy Jenks, defensive defenseman, medium elite. Leafs took this guy Lankow, medium elite sniper, 75 overall. That's a very nice pick. Good for them. I still need to try and get this trade done. As it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get a third line center out of it, I'm going to have to get that through some other avenue. So let's do it again. Tyler Johnson and the fifth overall pick. Okay, Cole Perfetti with the 27th overall pick for the fifth overall pick two-thirds next season Tyler Johnson just for the contract spots Cole Perfetti former 10th overall pick in this alternate universe hasn't been great he can be a star he has the ability to do it maybe he can do it on Pittsburgh we're pretty log jammed here in Honolulu it was never meant to be Cole okay Cole straight up boys straight too far what this is crazy I guess I'm gonna have to just pass on the defenseman I don't know Offense defenseman, I guess other ones will come around that'll be highly touted that I could trade for in the future I really want to get this guy uh, Stephen Fye goes to the blood to the Blackhawks. I Really thought that Cole Perfetti and my first round pick would go through 27th overall pick and a medium elite uh, Centerman did it grow in value Did the pick grow in value because when it was at the first overall pick I, only, I thought that it was gonna go through So yeah, two first yeah, it's classic glitch I thought it was going to go through for sure, like no question. Uh, does no one even want to trade their picks here in this first round? The first pick that would be tradable is from the Coyotes. So I guess I'm going to have to pass up on getting this guy from the Penguins. I was really sure that I was going to be able to get him and draft him, but I guess Cole Perfetti can be used in a different offseason move. So maybe it was a blessing in disguise, but we're going to pass on this guy right now. He was 75 overall, medium elite offensive defenseman. He had three-star shooting, 82 offensive awareness, three and a half star skating. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to pass on him. Sorry, Yerka, didn't work out. But speaking of Yerka, I do have to right now go and get Yerki Engren back from the Toronto Maple Leafs. If you knew a uh, few episodes, I accidentally traded Yerki Engren, Yerka's brother, to the Maple Leafs, low elite defenseman. I need to trade back for him, so I'll just swap rookies. Swap low elite rookies, how about that? 62 overall, 19 years old. Yerke is 71 overall, 22 years old, so not that great of a prospect to be honest, but we have to get Yerke back on this team. Could I squeeze like a 6th and a 7th in it too? Uh, trade accepted, awesome. So Yerke Angren back on Honolulu, sorry I ever traded you away. Let's start simulating up. Let's go see what the uh, who's available by the Coyotes pick and if I would want to trade up for that. High top 9 Phillips there, 63 overall, 75 overall, what a miss there, sheesh. Two-way forward, high top nine, 63, then Del Monte, 75 overall, medium top six. Seems like a decent draft. A lot of medium top six skaters going here. Uh, the Coyotes, all right. The 20th overall pick, who is available? Would I want to trade up for this pick? I don't think so. This guy, Robert Ekman Larson, is decent. Uh, Jay Cyphers, our scouts have him ranked 16th. Defensive defenseman. I don't need him, though. I think we'll just go ahead and go to my pick, boys. It's just not worth it. Let's go to pick 27. Uh, Sauvé was a low elite offensive defenseman. 
Besides that, all the medium top sixes here, Cypher, medium top 4D, Lang, medium top six, X-Men Larson. So we'll go ahead and make the selection here, pick number 27. It was a bit of a process to get here. And just like we anticipated, there's no one who we're very interested in. I'm not going to use a first round pick to, drank a, to draft a medium top nine forward. So I'd like to just keep taking timeouts until I can figure this one out. I might just trade for a pick around 45 because there are medium top six forwards there, which are better than the medium top nines that are here now. Boston previously offered me a second and a third for that first round pick, so it ended up not being a bad deal, I don't think. Maybe I can get a fourth and a fifth next season with it as well. Uh, it's still too far off. Let's see here. Give me 41, 72, I'll give, and then we'll swap picks next season. You give me a fifth, I'll give you a sixth. Trade accepted. Thanks, Boston. Taking forever to get these deals done. So they get back-to-back -back picks now. They draft medium top nine forward two-way guy. Go down to pick number 41. So our first pick in this draft is the 41st overall selection. We're finally going to make a pick. And it looks like it's going to be Damian Reynolds, I think. Or it's going to be Jace Boyd. Do we want a six foot two left-wing sniper, three years away similar to Theo Fleury, or Damian Reynolds, a two-way D, four years away, similar to no one? Uh, then there's Latipop. I have a couple picks here, right? I have, uh, well, when's my next? 16th. So whoever I pick, the people around him are not going to be there later. So it's pretty much like, do I take Latipov, who's a two-way centerman? Uh, Michael Backlund, not good at face-offs, or is he not very fast either? Igor Kovalev, a two-way forward. Vyacheslav Nechuskin. These are tough. Well, four years away, not good at face-offs. Anyway, let's just go for Boyd, the left-wing sniper. Medium top six potential. We know that he has it. Welcome to Honolulu. Jace Boyd, he is 64 overall. Medium top six, just as good as like a mid-first-round pick, to be honest. So... Going to pick number 47 now. These guys all went medium top six, low elite. Uh, Dan Foos was a center playmaker, medium top six, medium top four, medium top four. Here at pick number 47 now, I think that we're gonna go with either Belmar or Igor Kovalev. Igor's dropped a little bit. Francois Belmar is a right wing, possibly a two way forward shot utilization, four years away. I think I'll just go with the guarantee, take Igor from Kazakhstan. Welcome, Igor. He's 61 overall, medium top six. What was Belmar? 60 overall, medium top six, sniper. He's 17 years old, Igor 18, whatever. So going to pick 58 now. We want to get that goalie, but we don't want to miss him. He's ranked 59. So maybe I can trade for pick number 57 or something like that. This is pick 58. 57 is right here. And he's ranked 59. I really don't want to risk miss, missing him, but St. Louis doesn't want to trade their pick, which, should, which could be a bit of a pain. So I'll give you 58, and I'll throw in someone garbage. I'm only moving up two picks. You shouldn't want the world from me. Like, throw in a second-round pick next year. Keep sweetening it, sweetening it. We'll throw in Boudreau, who I wasn't going to re-sign anyways. His contract was up this year. Well, I was going to have to sign him to an entry-level deal. Maxime Boudreau. I could actually probably get even more out of this. This is turning into a bit of a long draft, which I don't like doing, but thank you St. Louis. I get a second and a sixth, and now I can hopefully go pick that goalie, and yeah, he is still there. Thank goodness. So make the pick, get the medium lead goalie. Maybe he's the future, maybe he's just trade bait, who knows, but Saul Bentley, welcome to the Honolulu Huskies, my friend. He was already playing in WHL, not too much of a trip. He is 48 overall, but he is touted as the future starter. He has the medium lead potential. Very excited to have him here. Next pick is at pick number 72. Make sure we're not missing anybody. Low top six. There's a lot of guys who are two bars low elite, but it's not enough for me to trade up for. Uh, not a lot of guys who are really interesting me. All these guys, two bars low elite, can't risk that. So I'm gonna go ahead and trade the uh, sim to pick 72. How did, uh, how did we do over here? A lot of low top sixes. Yeah, low elite is probably, when you see two bars low elite, it's probably low top six. You could also lose out. Uh, medium starter, this guy's 70 overall. Medium starter, 18 years old. My goodness, that's crazy. Meanwhile, the guy I get is 22 overall less, but has the medium elite potential. That's Pitts. What are you going to do? 72nd overall now. Let's try and finish off this draft a little bit, a little quicker. Patrick Smithson from Hungary could take him 
probably gonna be him to be honest. I don't see anybody else piquing my interest. Medium top nines. Everyone's a medium top nine in this world. Gogolev's a low top six, but I can get him with my next pick. Let's take a risk for once. Take a little bit of a risk. Patrick Smithson, four years away. Welcome to Honolulu, it's a bit of a trip. He is medium top nine. Okay, go to pick 89. Gogolev just went, whatever. Let's go for Odell. Jaro or Yaro Odell, low top six, another two-way center who does not, who is not good at face-offs, it says. What a classic. Welcome to Honolulu, Yaro. He is low top six, 59 overall. Pick 107. Let's just go to it. Hopefully we're not missing anybody too special, but getting a, this is getting a bit of a becoming a bit of a long draft. And there is nobody. Next guy I'm even interested in is like 20 picks away still. Radulov, maybe. Dmitry Radulov. Yeah, I can go for him. So let's I'm gonna try to trade for pick 131 or something. I'll give you two fourth round picks for two fifths and a sixth. Perfect. If I didn't accept this, the fans would call for my resignation. So that fifth and a sixth is not next year, but in two years, because I want to start gearing up, uh, getting some draft picks for there as well. A medium print start, not just getting picks for next season, having 105th round picks next year. So pick 131, go ahead and select uh, Radulov or whatever. This guy's one bar low elite. Oh, I also want to get this guy, Cooper Pete. So do I take Radulov? Yeah, I can trade for Pete. So I'll take Radulov right now. He is low top nine, come on. Tough, Bouillard was low top nine as well. Oh my goodness, so let's trade with the, uh, the Flames here to get that pick back. I'll give you 140 for 135, and I'll throw in, I have a lot of picks next year, I'll throw in a seventh round pick next year. That's a pretty great deal, I'm happy to accept this, thanks Calgary. So another good goalie in the system coming up here, Cooper, Pete, as we try to figure out who grows to what and who is just trade bait. From the Seattle Thunderbirds, not too much of a trip for him to Honolulu, 52 overall, medium elite. Welcome to the team, nice to get some good players like that in the system. Go to pick number 182. Sorting by potential, looking at 182. There is a guy who's low franchise, two bars, so I doubt. But I'm definitely going to take a chance on him. There are some low elites. Yoquin, Yoquin, Yoquin Bennington. Friend, uh, distant cousin of both Yoquin Phoenix and Jordan Bennington. Definitely got to go for him, but is there anyone else ranked higher? Two bars, medium top six, 195. Whatever, let's just go for Bennington. Yoquin Bennington, Yoquin Bennington, however you want to say it. He's 49 overall, low elite, a playmaker. Pick number 189 now. Miko Ordio ranked 178. Davis Roach, two bars, medium top six. Who else do I have pinned over here? This guy's low elite. Let's take the low franchise, guys. Pete Martin. Let's see what he actually is. We've been waiting to figure it out. The scouts say two bars, low franchise, which is pretty rare. No chance he is, but let's see what they have to say. He is low elite, 49 overall. All right. So we have no more picks left in the draft, but there are still some people that I'd like to get. Namely, I'd like to get Wyatt Loins and Yuri Perezogin, who's low top 4D guaranteed. Any other guarantees around here, that low elite guy? That's who I just said. Two bar low elite, not enough to take a chance on. Davis Roach, I don't think I'm going to take a chance on him. Take a chance, take a chance. Low top six guaranteed Valerie Koltsov here. Also Cody Baines, not good at face-offs or skating. This guy's not good at skating, defensive consistency, or face-offs. Five years away. But he has the low top six potential, that's all that matters. Baines is actually ranked higher. Maybe I'll take Baines instead. He's only three bars low top six though. Four years away, 19 years old. This guy's 17. Let's, take, let's go for Koltsov. So I need to get like three seventh round picks here just to make a few moves. Roach was medium bottom six. Okay, perfect, that worked out. Not gonna trade with Pittsburgh. Ordeo was low top nine, perfect. Let's see what I can get from Philadelphia. So the three trades are made. I got all those three picks for sevenths and sixths and bad prospects for extra picks. Traded those picks I just got for different picks, whatever, got it all done. Let's just draft those three people. First, we're gonna go ahead and take the one draft uh, ranked the highest. That is Loins, ranked the highest I meant. Wyatt Loins, low top six, 17 years old, 53 years old, 53 years old. Man, my brain is really fried today. This was a really long draft, longer than I wanted it to be. Maybe not long for you, but that Cole Perfetti whole situation was really long. Koltsov is 50 overall, low top six, 
And then lastly, we take Perizogin, who is guaranteed low top 4D. Oh boy, 51 overall. Thank you very much. Sim the draft. Let's get out of here. Pack it up. A lot of prospects right there. As always, many of them don't make it. Many of them get traded, but it's nice to have a good system of potential down there. So now I've got to take care of all the coaches, the scouts, and I will see you when we are at our contracts. All right, so let's quickly go through what is going to happen with the re-sign phase here. First, UF phase. Cole Lynch, he doesn't want the extension. He wants over two million, which means I'd have to sign like 2.5 or something. Don't think that's gonna happen. Actually, it's not gonna happen. If I sign him, it would be in free agency, so goodbye, Cole. Uh, Bastion, probably not. Alvin's, yeah, I'll resign him. Uh, release, release, probably resign, probably resign both of those. Release, uh, sign these prospects. Tiny Lee, of course, you have to resign Tiny Lee, six foot one power forward. Uh, Rulo probably let him go. Did I trade him? I thought I traded uh, Boudreau. There's too many of these uh, random French generated players. RFAs qualify Pelic and then sign all three of these. Although Krebs, uh, maybe I'll just qualify Krebs. But mm, yeah, I'll probably just qualify Krebs because I don't know if he's going to be staying here. Goalies, Hunter Jones qualify, but there's other goalies in the system now, man. I guess he could be my starter with Sweeney backing him up, but then Charlie Luongo won't have a spot. This will probably be Hunter Jones' last season, to be honest. And then all unsigned players. Alberts can make the team. Louis Alberts, the Frenchman. He was a second-round pick, was he? La sorry, Landon Alberts. Sorry, no, he was first-round pick. 15th overall last season. Two-way D from France. So take care of all of that, and then we'll advance a day. So advance a day here. Uh, to be honest, I'm not thrilled with the role you've offered, but after Mulligan over, I accept. Maximilian Kress, our former head coach, who is now our associate coach, he signs back on to continue being the associate coach. Ruslana Prospel continues to be our goalie coach in the AHL. Hunter Jones is back. Suzuki, Hollowell, Alar, Alvines, Yurtepapa, Tiny Lee, Bryce Kreider, who is a fifth round pick, 70 overall, medium top 4D, so that's great. Josh Williams, Barkland doesn't want it, so see you later. Alberts, yes, all right, perfect. So it wasn't much to do in terms of taking care of anything. Barkland can be released. He doesn't want to resign. He was a former fifth round pick. Both these guys are qualified. Everyone, all right, so it was an easy resign phase. Now it's going to be uh, going to free agency and seeing who we trade, who's available, and what can we do. All right, so before we go into free agency, we have to see who's on our team and who should we trade, maybe. So looking just at forwards here, let's go to centers. So first line center, second line center, second line wing is Max Domi with his 77 faceoffs. So they're good, but I like him as a winger. So Trevor Wong could be second line center. Cole Perfetti, he's third line center unless we get somebody else. So I'd like to try and move Cole Perfetti, perhaps. Left wing, we go just Eli Tolvanen pretty much. I have no other left wingers. Max Domi could be second line left wing, but third line, fourth line, there's nobody. Unless you bring up uh, Peyton Krebs or Sebastian Genze here. Right wing, Rantanen first line, Pelik second line, but then we still have to figure out Kaliev and Vieira probably won't make the team. So then one, two, three, four, five, six on defense. But uh, Bright Crows might grow to make the team. That's an issue as well. We'll figure that out. We'll figure those guys out later on, but I think for right right now, I need to figure out moving Kaliev and Perfetti to free up some cap space. Because if I put uh, Perfetti and Kaliev on the open block here, maybe I even put uh, Peyton Krebs on the open block. How many people can I throw on the open block here? Ryan Suzuki, who else do I want to get rid of? Williams. Anyone want to give me a nice big package deal for all these guys? No, not. <laughs> why would they, right? Let's say just Perfetti and Kaliev. I can get Hampus Lindholm and a second round pick or a goalie with medium lead potential and a first round pick. Not really what I'm looking for. So let me try just Cole Perfetti. I get Hampus Lindholm, the same offer from the Rangers or Ilya Shesterkin and a second round pick. That's pretty interesting, but he's on an expiring deal. I have a starting goaltender. Not really the type of deal that I'm looking for. I need a good third line center. Okay, let's go to free agency and see who's here before I start making trades then, I guess. I was hoping to free up money before coming into free agency. Go to UFAs, sort by overall. We have not a lot of money. All my money would go to Skylar Pellick. So to be honest, there's not much reason to even look at free agency. If I were, were to look at centers here, I want a third line center. Uh, it would cost me a few million to get somebody down here. There's a lot of good options. Phil Deno, what's he done after he left Honolulu? Not much. 
nine goals, 22 assists last season. No, he hasn't done really anything with Carolina or Toronto. Oh, boy, this is not going to be easy to get these guys signed up. Maybe I keep Perfetti just because of his good contract then. But for right now, I'm going to go figure out the scouts, if there's any new good ones to hire, as well as if I should make any trades and who I could acquire to free up some money. So I'm going to go take care of all that, and I'll be back when I have a trade idea, at least for Arthur Kaliev and probably Peyton Krebs. So I got a deal with the Blues here to get JT Miller. He has two years left at 2.3, and he has a very good uh, overall for a third-line scoring forward. He's 84 overall. Last season, he put up 54 points. The year before, he put up 51. The year before, 57. So a very good third-line center. Third-line center. Third-line winger, who could also play center, actually, with 77 face-offs. 90 poise. I think he'd be a great addition to our third line. Trying to just throw a bunch of stuff at St. Louis. Kaliev, Williams, Suzuki, other pieces. So I'll probably just take out this guy, Boos. I'll throw in some sort of draft pick to make it worth their while. Maybe Kaliev can actually become something in St. Louis. Third round pick, Honolulu, still don't want it. It's tough. There's not a lot of people that I could even put in to this deal. Maybe I put in Malatesta. Now, that wouldn't be a bad deal, right? You got a bunch of prospects here. Kaliev, Williams, Suzuki, Danielson, Malatesta, all people that I just want to get off my team for JT Miller. Trade accepted. Thank you very much, St. Louis. JT Miller is our new third-line winger. Very happy to have him on the team. Although, the salary cap is still an issue, no matter who I get, because if I trade Kaliev and Perfetti, that's only about $2.5 million I free up, which would is pretty negligible. I think I have to move a defenseman. See, Morgan Riley is making about $10 million for their four years. Ellis Anderson's on a fantastic contract, but he's it's not going to last forever. Matt's Lindback's on an amazing contract as well. It's more Matt Dumba that I'm looking at here, because next season we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... But if Janssen really grows and Dumba goes down to my third pair, I know he's on a great deal. I know he's an amazing defenseman. He's a really good two-way D, strong plus minus every year. I love Matt Dumba. And I know it's not a big contract, but if I want to keep Morgan Riley, maybe I have, or maybe I trade Morgan Riley. He has full bar trade value. And it's like he's really good, but he's not crazy amazing, is he? With full bar trade value, maybe I take advantage of the full bar trade value. That's $10 million right there for the next four seasons. I'd probably have to move him soon anyways with Ellis Anderson's contract coming up. Uh, that's a, he's a good third liner. Let me see. I doubt anything would come up in the trade finder if I put uh, Morgan Riley. I, I was really happy when I got him. He's worn the A on the team for the last couple seasons. No trades found for Morgan Riley. I don't even know what I'd trade him for. To be honest, that's a that's a crazy high trade value. I'm not sure what I'd even want to get for him. I have my starting goalie. I have my top six forwards. My third line seems to be JT Miller, Cole Perfetti, and like Peyton Krebs or something. Unless I go back to player search, I find I think I saw when I looked at third liners, third line forwards. I saw it was Anton Lundell that I saw. Anton Lundell here, 86 overall. Yeah. 86 overall, but he's on the last year of his deal. That's the issue. 24 years old, 86, and he's listed as a third liner, which is pretty great. And he has, he's a good two-way forward. Look at those defensive stats. Five-star defense. Maybe I get Anton Lundell. Uh, he was the ninth overall pick right before Cole Perfetti. I got to be careful, because no matter if I get a really good center and they grow, then I, but uh, Trevor Wong's not going to be able to be replaced right now. I could go after Ezra Pittis. Uh, wouldn't really make much sense though because he'd be my third line left wing this season then after next year maybe it goes to my top line Max Domi moves out of my top line maybe I go for a long-term winger like a really good winger prospect who could replace Max Domi once I can't pay him next year or the year after let's go to forward with like really good potential we'll say four and a half stars is that what is that medium that's only franchise and uh and elite right Max, between, between 17 and 19 years old. Uh, no, that's too much, right? That also includes top six. Go to the five star. Okay, 75 prospects now. Drops off very quickly. But at the top, there are some big, big boys. Uh, most of them on entry level deals. Boudin is really good. Remember, we saw him on Buffalo. Caden Boudin, Boudin, Boudins, Boudins, whatever you want to call him. Five star shooting, power forward. Uh, two years off his entry-level deal. He was the first overall pick last season. 
Uh, weird stats though, 17 goals, 7 assists. I don't know, this guy Ronning, Zachary Ronning, 4th overall pick, 2-way forward. We, I like 2-way forwards, 12 points in 31 games, not really a lot to go by. Vincent Giroux, power forward, 6 foot 3. Did he play? I don't think he played anything. Oh, he did. 20 points in 44 games. Really good points in the queue. What did Caden do? 94 points in the queue, 24 points in his rookie season. Nothing crazy. He's already listed as a second line forward. So if I get him to play on the third line with JT Miller and Cole Perfetti, I'm only going to have him for like two years on an entry level deal. That's what's really not as good. Langkow, the guy who just went to Sheldon Langkow to the Maple Leafs, 100, 103 points last year for him. He's in the WHL, that's the problem. I have to play him in the NHL. I play him in the NHL or nothing, because I, I don't want to play them in junior, do I? And use up a year of his entry-level deal? No, I don't want to do that. If I get Pittis, no, I can't do that either. Could I get Pittis? Pittis, who's better, Pittis or Boudin? This guy, he has the franchise potential. I doubt they trade him to me, though. Let me try Pittis or Brennan. Let me keep working on this over here. What's really shocking is Saul Bentley's trade value. This guy, McLennan, who I drafted in the fourth round near before, immediately potential has more value. Even Pete, who I drafted in the fifth round, has more value than Bentley, who I drafted in the second round, which is a bit garbage. But I'm going to let them all continue to do their own growing. If I throw in Morgan Riley, what other prospects can I put in here? I have a lot of good rookie skaters. I could. This guy's unsigned, Kozevnikov. He has a lot of value for some reason. Ah, boy, 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 boy. This is a tough one. Igor Kovalev. When did I draft Igor Kovalev? Second round, 47th overall. I could throw in Justin Barron, because and then Bright Cruz could come in to that slot. I could throw in Martin, the guy who had the two bars, medium franchi uh, low franchise. Maybe this is this would match the because Riley has a little bit less than full bar trade value. What do you think about this, LA? <laughs> trade accepted. So for one of the best defensemen in the NHL, we get possibly the best prospect in the NHL, Ezra Pittis, the first overall pick, medium franchise sniper. That's what you need in NHL. You need the goal scoring. So in the juniors, he scored 50 goals and 45 assists in the USA Development System and 95 points. Is he going to be amazing? I don't know. He's going to be a third-line winger this season, probably. Max Domi, I don't know if he'll be out next season. But we had to figure out something to do with that money to re-sign Skylar Pellick. And we did it. So I don't like that we had to move Morgan Riley. But we had a, a, an embarrassment of riches on defense. And Cole Perfetti's only staying because he's on such a cheap contract as a third-line center. Uh, free agents now. So if I go sign Skylar Pellick... That would leave me, hold on, Skylar Pellick, he wants 9.8 million for seven years, really. He wanted like seven years, uh, 11 plus million before. So maybe I will, let me, let me try seven years, 9 million on Skylar Pellick. That would be amazing. And then that would still leave me with another seven, eight million dollars. Maybe I do try and go after a third line center who would be a bit better if I go sort by overall. I have, like, I could get a Logan Brown here. Could get a Logan Brown. No, he's not that good at face-offs. Hold on, go to UFAs. My mind's a bit buzzed right now. Uh, someone who's young and good. Force back at Carlson, way too much money. Uh, Nick Schmaltz, Lias Anderson, I don't know. Uh, Phil Dano, Isaac Lundstrom, I've seen him be a monster as a playmaker. If he's playing with Ezra Pittis, maybe a good playmaker would be the thing to do and now uh, with J JT Miller as well maybe Isaac Lundstrom is the way to go uh, then I'd sign then I'd have to trade Cole Perfetti then what do I do with Cole Perfetti and what do I trade him for because I, I it's an embarrassment of riches here in Honolulu but we still can't seem to win maybe, an all, maybe I get also another a better depth defenseman if I signed him for two years he wants three million I need to think about next year as well I think I'm just going to wait to see if Skylar Pellick signs that contract first, and I'll see who's available still in free agency. Honka and a third for Sorelli and a second there. Mario Gervais, I would have loved to sign with your team. Oh, yeah, it's true. I wanted that scout, but then I realized he wasn't that good. Didn't see what that trade offer was, just declined it on the spot. Skylar Pellick, extremely happy to accept your offer. Shoo, boy. That, uh, those are good deals, man. Wheeling and dealing here in Honolulu to get these stars signed up long term. So let's say I want to go to expire to all expiring to see how much money I have next season. How much money do I have next season? I have seven. No, it's not true. Seven point. Is that really? No, it is true. Seven point eight six million dollars. 
because I go to main roster here, sort by money for 26-27 season. I want to see for 27-28 season. Everyone's still on their contracts. Yeah, so not much changes. Genze, Baron needs to be signed, but pretty much everything else stays the same. Di Pietro's going to need a new contract by then. But everything's pretty much the same. So whatever I do this season, pretty much is next season as well. So if I sign someone for 3 mil and I have 4 mil free next year, it'll probably still be 4 mil. But no one really needs an extension aside from Di Pietro. So maybe I could swing that. Let's see who's still here in free agency. Oh, no, didn't mean to advance today. That's not good. Who's still here in free agency? Isaac Lundstrom is still here. Trocek, Morgan Frost. That would be interesting. He's a good playmaker. Not a great centerman. Isaac Lundstrom, though, what are his face-offs? 85, yeah, he's a good centerman. Phil Dano would be great as a, if I change him back to being a two-way forward, maybe. He didn't do great with us here, but that's because he... He didn't do great on Honolulu, but that's because we played him as a playmaker, second-line center. But if I change him to a two-way third-line center, maybe he could get it done. Because, look, he has a four-star defense. Isaac Lundstrom, though... Uh, Dano is cheaper, but he is seven years older. Antoine Morand is there, former captain and 86 overall center on the Anaheim Ducks, if you saw the Anaheim Ducks franchise mode series. Elias Anderson, he has 84 faceoffs, 90 defensive awareness, and is a sniper, really? What has he done? Uh, he's been decent. Not good plus minus, but he's been on, uh, he was on the Bad Sharks team. Then he moved just when they won a Stanley Cup. But the coach says he would fit forward line three, Isaac Lundstrom would. Dano would also fit forward line three. Do I go Dano or Lundstrom? There is a team interested in Dano. So do I go for Lundstrom, sign him like two years, three million? Or do I go, go for Phil Dano, sign him one or two years, around 2.65 million? They're both playmakers, but Dano is really a two-way forward. I would change him back. I'm the one who changed him to be a playmaker. Or do I keep Cole Perfetti on my third line since he's already a playmaker and he can be with P Pittis and JT Miller and he's much cheaper than these options. Uh, but he has a lot of trade value. But what, then what would I trade him for the trade value? What would I trade him for even? Really torn by a bunch of different permutations that I could see happening next season. Let me see defense again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Justin Barron would be a permanent guy, but I, but I also don't mind trading him, making Bright Cruz my depth defender. Uh, Oscar Janssen can play with Dumba on the second pair. I get maybe an 83 overall guy to play with Kovalev on the third pair. Maybe that's the free agent signing that I go for, an 83 overall defenseman who's available here. Colden Pareko's there. Maybe someone around this area. Tyson Barry, too old. And to, ah, actually, he doesn't want a lot of money. He is an offensive defenseman, though. Do I? Oh, no, he's two-way. Okay, he's two-way. What did he do last? He is 34 years old. That's the issue. 36 points last season. He's at top six D potential. Now he's going to drop. I need someone with top four D potential. Ah, oh, boy. Brendan, the defenseman want a lot of money, man. Brendan Montour and Shane Gosesbear. And, like, who's this guy? Ross Anderson? Rasmus Anderson. He wants... These guys want as much as Matt Dumba's making as an 86 overall. So, no, I'm not going to sign any of those guys. I'm going to keep simulating a few days. And hopefully they want a little bit less later on. See, I could trade Cole Perfetti for a good third pair D. And then sign a forward of Lundstrom or Dano, but I'd really prefer to keep Perfetti. I drafted him. I know he's not really doing much, but he's coming off a career year. I'd, I'd want to give him the chance instead of just giving up on him as soon as he starts to do a bit better. Yes, for Brett, who we always wanted to get, but he's a bit too expensive. Plus, I don't need him anymore since I have Ezra on the team. Ezra Pittis, the dry bones. A lot of biblical references coming up. For, for Ezra. Dmitry Orlov down to 4.5, but he's 34 years old with top, deep poten top 60 potential. It would have to be Brendan Montour, Rasmus Anderson, or Jake McCabe, and neither of these guys are super interesting. They also have teams interested in them. I don't know how. Negative 25, Rasmus Anderson last year, and Jake McCabe, negative 18. So I think I'm going to take my... Uh, I'm just going to go to the next season, take my chances. We'll see who grows to what by next season. And uh, we'll see where we are by the time the lines come around. So I'll see you at the beginning of 2026-2027 when we have a better idea of how this team is going to look. I'm quite excited. Uh, okay, so Peyton Krebs has been offered 
a offer sheet here. I was hoping that he would just resign for whatever, but two years at $2.1 million, I'm okay with matching that. That's a pretty good deal for Peyton Krebs. Hopefully he continues to do okay. He'll probably be a fourth line left wing again. Now that I have Ezra Pittis on the team, I was gonna do uh, Perfetti, Miller, and Krebs, but I'd much rather have Pittis, so we'll see what uh, what it looks like. As per usual, he's got to make a quick move to free up a couple spots here. Alao, there's too many defensemen in the AHL, and Luongo is the third goalie in the AHL. He's been really good. Medium backup potential, 22 years old, 67 overall. He's put up some really great numbers in San Diego, but we have, just have way too many good goalies in the system, and he's never going to, although he's be, he'll be great in San Diego, he would be great to continue there. We have no room for him, so off to Minnesota for a random draft pick. Sixth round pick gets it done. I really would have uh, preferred to keep Charlie Luongo, but unfortunately we couldn't. Now we can take a look at the lines. In the NHL, oh, hold on, AHL, fix it up. Boop, AHL is going to look something like this. Still got to work on it a little bit, but something like that. We'll get it done. NHL, this is how we're looking, boys. First line, Tolvanen, Silver, Rantanen. The classic plus three, we got the, all the big boys, the captain, who's like a playmaker, who's a sniper, Duke Silver, who's a sniper, who's a playmaker. Second line, Max Domi, Trevor Wong, Skylar Pellick, the classic second line as well. Now the bottom stick is where we have some changes. Third line, the new franchise sniper as well to go along with Skylar Pellick, Ezra Pittis from the LA Kings centered by Cole Perfetti, 83 overall playmaker, and then JT Miller on the left wing. Fourth line, Sebastian Genze, our first round pick in 2022, has made the NHL. Peyton Krebs is the center with 74 faceoffs. So once I change him to a center, it's going to be a plus one on the line. And Gail Redden, who is a center with 64 faceoffs. So I'm going to change him to a right winger, and it'll be center right wing, and it'll have a plus one. So plus three, plus one, plus one, plus one. On defense, it's plus five zero zero, but I'll take it. We have Matt Lindback and Ellis Anderson, Matt Dumba with Oscar Janssen, and Pavel Kovlev with Justin Barron. I'm considering trading Justin Barron for a better third pair D, uh, or even just for for anything else, and bringing in Junior Bright Cruz instead because he is a top six defenseman listed as, and he's low elite. Uh, potential. So if I do bring him in over Baron and put him on the third D pair, it gives the third pair, it keeps it at zero. So no changes there, but I would prefer to get him in on the action. So I think I'm going to go try and trade Justin Barron for a better depth defenseman, someone like an 80 overall. Got to fix up some AHL signings as well, change Peyton Krebs to a centerman, and I'll be back. So here's an offer that the Predator has offered me. If I go and put Justin Barron on the open block, I get a lot of things, second and a fourth, third and a prospect, low, low top 4D or something. But the Predators are offering me a third round pick from the Kings, as well as Vitrano and Riley. So Vitrano, we've had him before, he's not great, he's not, nothing too wild, but I wouldn't mind having him as death. We played 58 games for us, got only 8 points, but you know 25 points last year i think he has three three star defense 83 defensive awareness isn't bad to fill in on the fourth line when needed plus i don't have anyone else at forward depth so he wouldn't be bad also mike riley could be our defensive depth 78 overall i'm always i've always been a big fan of mike riley he's a really good skater he's a big boy and i think he'd be nice as well on this team uh, 50 points in the AHL last season, uh, plus 22, plus 24 the last couple of years in the minor, so bring him up here. Throw in a sixth round pick, would this go through? Yes, it would. Thank you, Nashville. A third and a sixth, and both of our depth pieces for this season for forwards and defense. So I'm gonna uh, advance a couple days. I sent out some offers to people from the AHL, see if they sign on, then we'll verify that everything's good to go and we will hit the preseason. We can go through the first game though. Let's see what we do against Coyotes. Thomas Sino. Now, Thomas Sino, remember, he's a good prospect. Medium top six potential. And he, he was an RFA. So I offered him a three-year deal. The Coyotes haven't done anything to him. So hopefully he'll sign on, and that'll just be a free piece that I can move for value if needed. Or he can just continue to grow in the minors if that's what happens. They has been matched. All right, they matched it. Fair enough. A couple 5-1 wins right there. Let's fix up the lineup the power play and all that. I'm gonna do the AHL and the NHL power play. Okay, so Krebs at center, we got the plus one. On defense, Bright Cruz is here. I'm just gonna call him Junior from here on out. Big Junior. 
And then special team, you got the plus three and the plus one out of the 10 players. Nine of them are forwards. The only defenseman is Ellis Anderson here. So we'll see if that works out. And on penalty kill, they're both at zeros, but I like Silver and Miller together. Miller's a very good defensive forward. Uh, Anderson, Dumba, Perfetti, Tolvanen, Jansen, Lindback. We'll see how that works out. We had the best penalty kill in the NHL last season, so hopefully it continues. Same with the power play. Also in Nets, Ilya Samsonov has dropped to an 86 overall. A bit concerning, but if he keeps up the same numbers, I couldn't care less about what the overall is. He could be 65 overall, as long as he's good. Raleigh and Vetrano on the scratches right there. AHL lines look like this. I could use a better first line centerman, but uh, no problem. Medium top six, Savatsky, I'd probably, bah, I don't want to lose that plus one. Uh, Oli Heiskinen, low top six, Toivonen and medium bottom whatever. Let's just put it like this. Give Savatsky some more ice time with, Ken, with uh, Carson Bruce, who's uh, one of my best prospects as well. Actually, it goes up here, it's a plus three. So let's put him there. And let's put uh, Heiskanen and Kovacs here on the second line with Savatsky. Fantastic. Defense, plus one, plus one, zero. Valentenko, Giftopoulos, uh, Yerke Engren, Kreider, Alberts. We have a lot of good prospects on defense. And in Nets, we have Hunter Jones backed up by Lee Sweeney. So we're looking good at San Diego. We're looking good in the NHL. Very excited for this season. Let's finish off the preseason and see what we're looking like. Beat the Sharks 7-1. We've only let in one goal in the last three games. 17 goals, 4-3 against. Make that 23 goals, 4 and 7 against. 7-0 seven, victory. My goodness. 5-2 win. We're 6-0. and oh. And can we finish it off against Vegas? Oh, 4-3 loss. But a 6-1-0 and oh record in that preseason. My goodness. 14 points in 7 games for Max Domi. Pure playmaking machine. What were our goals for and goals against in the end? We were 38 goals for, 12 goals against in those seven games. Sheesh, 38 goals in seven games. Who scored them all? Yeah, Skylar Pellick had eight. Duke Silver had six. Wong had four. That's great. Ellis Anderson, 11 points in seven games. JT Miller had eight points. This team's looking good. Cole Perfetti, five points in seven games. Got to give it to him. He has the power play time. He has the third line time. Maybe this is a year for him to grow. Pittis, uh, he also has power play time and third line time. Okay, Oscar Janssen, Peyton Krebs. Okay, Genze, the only person who didn't get a point. And Samsonov had great numbers as well. 932 save percentage, 1.71 goals against average. So, boys, we're looking good. I think we're ready to hop into next season. Concerning the jersey numbers here, with Morgan Riley gone, we now have to fill in a new alternate captain. And that's true. Also, Alex Ovechkin's gone, so we need to fill in both alternate captains. So, Duke Silver is going to get an A for sure. But I'm not sure about Ellis Anderson having an A. He hasn't been on the team as long. Who's been on the team for a while now? Who, who's been a good leader? Max Domi, I think it's his third or fourth season. Duke Silver, of course, has been here since the beginning. Eli Tolvanen's a monster, but I don't want to just give it all to the top line. I'd like to get a defenseman, actually. Who's been here longer? Let's go see. Anderson, Lindback, Dumba. Anderson's 25. Dumba's 32. He's uh, He has that old... Uh, he has the experience. He's played three full seasons in Honolulu. Ellis Anderson has played four full seasons in Honolulu. And Matt Lindback has played four full seasons in Honolulu. So I think Matt Dumba, he ended up, we kept him over Morgan Riley. I think I'm going to give it to Matt Dumba. He's going to be a good leader on the back end to keep the defense strong. I don't want to just give it all to my best players, like the, my three top scorers are the captain and two alternates. So Captain Miko Rantanen. Alternate captains are going to be Duke Silver and Matt Dumba. So we also we switch out Morgan Riley and we get Mike Riley. So don't sell your M. Riley uh, jerseys just yet, Honolulu fans, because we got another one. We are champion status. We had a great preseason. It was a long offseason with the draft and free agency. Hopefully it wasn't too long for you. I know It was really long for me. Hopefully all the cuts and things that don't make it keep uh, this episode relatively short. So we just want to quickly end off by browsing the trade blocks. And if there's anybody that you notice that you think we should go after, one year left, Ekman Larson. Not necessarily right now, but maybe even at the trade block moving into next season. Who should we keep an eye on? Uh, look note, especially for people who have one year left on their deal. Think about players like Patrick Kane who have one year left on their deal. I, I remember noticing that because uh, last season he had two years. Jake Bean, Ghost is Bear. Both these guys were free agents. And Edmonton signed them both for 5.555 and 4.775. And they're both trash and they're on their block. So 
How do you feel? Oh, how do you feel, Edmonton? But then look at this. Morgan Riley is also on the trade block. I could pick him back up for even cheaper than I sold him for. Four years left at 10 million. Maybe I look to uh, go back for him in future years, but he's on the block already. Antoine Morand is there. A lot of first round picks and prospects. Not necessarily the, what I'm looking for, though. Even Del Monte there. Phil Kessel, last year of his deal with Philadelphia. Athanasiu and Verana as well, both on one year deals. I could definitely see myself going after Phil Kessel. Ryan O'Reilly, Pavel Bushnevich, both with one year left on their deals. Ryan Ellis last year of his deal. Carter Hart is now in the Canucks, really. Two years left on his deal. Sergachev is here. So is Truba and Puliu Yarvi. One year left at 2.6. Oh, man, that's a lot of trade value for Yessi Puliu Yarvi. What has he done with Vegas? Oh, he's with Ed he was with Edmonton. Not much of a career, to be honest, but a really good contract, which boosts, boosts the trade value. Truba and Sergachev are also there. Uh, Shesterkin down to an 85. He was like a 90 overall. Now he's down to an 85. I guess they're keeping Bennington and trying to trade Shesterkin now. But those are the trade blocks. Those are the lines. Contracts is nothing really to even concern ourselves with. We are ready to go for next season, boys. So thank you so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Putting out daily NHL and FIFA content here on the channel. More coming soon, which keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks as I'll have another series starting up on a new game. But for now, we're just grinding out Honolulu here, going into the year number eight regular season. Looking for our best season yet, coming off a crazy one last year. So once again, thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments. I will do my best to incorporate them into next season, and I will see you in the next one.